we had a report of a um, a dead manatee. Actually, one of our citizens who had helped us previously knew exactly what to do. So he actually kayaked out to it and secured it for us overnight. Um, and then another volunteer here actually um, towed it over to his private boat ramp to make our recovery much easier. What we have is a juvenile male manatee. He's pretty decomposed, but um, we'll still be able to collect some samples from that. You guys, we're going. Okay. The last 10 days we've recovered 11 dolphins. Uh, this manatee that we're recovering right now for our colleagues at Florida Fish and Wildlife, the 220th manatee this year, just this year alone. So, I mean, our numbers are, you know, doubling what we normally see, tripling what we normally see. Uh, you know, we've got our network partners from all over. I've got someone from Cedar Key, Florida here from UF, University of Florida driving this manatee up for us so we can go back to work on our turtles. But in general, I can say what we're going to do with an animal treated by Florida, treated for Florida red tide exposure is they're going to give them fluid, fluid therapy. They're going to help that animal regain their strength and, and pass the um, food they might have eaten that might have contained the red tide toxins. Here we've recovered more than 165 sea turtles deceased in the areas that Moat serves primarily, especially Sarasota County, along with Manatee County. Some of those turtles were due to other things such as boat strikes um, and fishing gear entanglement, but a, a big portion of them are believed to be due to Florida red tide. When we get a deceased sea turtle in, our stranding investigations program here at Moat conducts a thorough necropsy and they learn as much as they can from the animal. And this is really small. It's a, um, you know, it's a juvenile Kemp's Ridley. They're the most endangered sea turtles we have in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but it's still very fresh. So they're, some of the unique things about them, they have these little pores along the side. When they're fresh, you can still see them. Fortunately, this is the same species, only much larger. Um, probably an adult or close to an adult. Um, but again, sadly, this is, this is about how big they get. So, you know, we've got two very distinct life stages here. What we typically collect to test for that, especially for our turtles, are um, organs that are associated with digestion. So we collect some of their food, um, we collect liver, kidney, those sort of filtering organs that would, would grab those toxins. So it's, with the dead ones, it's not necessarily blood. We do get, get blood samples from some of our live ones, but for these guys, it's actually tissue. We've got our tally marks going. Yeah, the red tide can be really patchy, so even though you don't see dead fish in front of you in one beach doesn't mean that they're not somewhere else. So uh, it doesn't feel like this is ending. Uh, just because the beach is clean doesn't mean that we're out of the woods by any sense of the imagination.